While I was playing in your mum's basement, I came up with another brilliant idea. But for me to show you this, I'm going to need to take you way back to the beginning. This is ground affected. Did I even click record? I did. This is ground affected. My name is your dad and welcome to blowing up the Warhammers again. Could be bad. So in order to make the biggest, baddest lunchbox boy carrying space marine RC tank you could ever have, I needed to have, of course, a space marine tank. My extremely inexpensive side cutting wire tool that came with one of my 3D printers made quick work of all the sprues and the little nubs that hold the plastic pieces into the sprues. I then set about the task of figuring out how in the hell am I going to make this tank into a working remote control tank. The first thing I needed to do was build the box, the shell, the piece I'm going to use to attach my electronic parts to. Then I spent a few minutes figuring out where I was going to add my servos. Once I had thought that I'd figured this out, I then made a sharp work of cutting out most of the plastic that I didn't need in this model. And once I had got that all worked out, it was time to work on the sound system that I had implemented in this model. Well, how, what, where do I have the wire? So the speaker, it doesn't matter which way around, but they have to go to... Doesn't matter which way around? No, because it would just be different phases, speakers work on phases. So. What does that mean? So it doesn't matter which way around it goes. If it sounds funny, you can swap them over, but it probably won't sound funny. So you got speaker, ground speaker, and then voltage is on the end. And then where's the power? That last one, yeah. Okay, test number one. And with the sound system complete and a little uh, greebly on top of the button for good measure, it was time to start working on how to make the turrets move. There are a couple of very cute little guns in the front of the tank that I would like to pretend shoot cupcakes on those really extremely busy picnic days on a battlefield. And in order to make them shoot cupcakes where you want them to go, I need these guns to move and so some 3D printed parts, a little bit of the uh, cutting and removing of plastic and I'm going to be able to make these guns move. The next step was for me to work out how I was going to do the tracks for this model. So I took the tread links from the old model that I did and I made them a little bit bigger and changed the designs on them to look just like the Land Raiders tracks. During this whole process, I thought that I was a very clever person and that I had this model in the bag. This was going to be super easy. No problems were going to come from doing this.
and with my confidence levels at an all-time high, I then proceeded to start working on making that front door open and close via the remote control. Did I get it? Yeah, 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 you got yeah. it. It's fine. No, you got it. It's bad for your health. I'm dying. He's going to be getting this. And after much fiddling and many uh, iterations of 3D printed parts, I finally worked out a mechanism that would work for opening the bottom door as well as the top door. This took some super serious, very careful measuring with absolutely no rulers to make sure that this worked. It was then time to solder and add power to this machine so I could start seeing these mechanisms work for real. And this meant that I needed to then bind my radio to my receiver. The gear that I'm using in this video is all remote control gear. It's the stuff that we would use to make a remote control aeroplane fly. However, this is not an aeroplane and neither does it fly. But once I was confident that the cupcake cannons were completely working and had no issues with them, I moved on to installing the servo that would then drive the doors open and closed. Again, a lot of this was measured with a hope and a prayer. When you're making something unique like this, there is really no book for you to follow. And this brings me to the part where I made a massive mistake and the track links that I had currently made were definitely not going to work. Not only were they too tight and if I added one more link they were way too loose, I needed to completely redesign them and so I did that. Unfortunately, this did take at least an entire day's worth of putting links together to find out that they wouldn't work. But while I was redesigning them, I also redesigned the way that the drive gear works. This is a much more robust way of making these track links work. On the previous tank, the tracks started to skip after a while, mainly because there just wasn't enough grip on the drive gears. Now we have pins which go straight into the drive gears and make it a little bit more um, reliable. Once I was confident that my tracks were going to work, it was time to start cutting the rest of this model away. There is a lot of stuff in between the doors, which basically keep the doors away from each other and also create some kind of passage if you were to keep the doors open on this model. However, this is just getting in the way of my track links and I need to remove all of this plastic. It was also during this process that I found out that knives can be very sharp.
and after a good cleanup and dusting and making sure that everything was going to work the way I wanted it to work, it was time to start printing a couple of spaces for the bearings that go onto the axles that will drive the tracks around this uh, tank's axle things. Are they axles? Tanks don't even have axles, do they? And I'm not going to lie, I'm certainly not a mathematician. I have absolutely no idea how to really work out the ratio of size of link to size of friggin' tread and all the rest of it. but. For some reason, on my second try, I got those links perfect, and it is, really is perfect. It's almost as if this Land Raider was made to be turned into an RC tank. Once I had figured out the exact positioning for the servos, it was time to cut out an opening which the servos would fit into. On the previous tank that I made, I made the drive train to be something that was connected directly to the servo mainly because it was easy enough to fit the servos into the tank and have them drive at an optimal point on this tank it's not that simple so i had to make a gear system this means that there is a drive gear on the servo and a gear that relates to that gear on the drive wheel which is then driven by the servo and uh, I needed to make sure I got all that working perfectly so I printed out some servo holders which will hold the servos in place and also space them to the right distance for those gears to mesh pretty much almost exact. Unfortunately, it was also at this time that I realized that I glued this model together a little bit too soon and I kind of needed to take it apart again just to fit the servos in. However, it is plastic, so plastic glue will stick this back together almost as if nothing ever happened. Now all that was left to do was stuff all the wires back into the tank and turn it on so I could find out if it actually worked. It was around this point in the project where I decided that a working remote control tank with doors that open, lights inside and moving guns is not really good enough. How would I take that to the next level and the only way I could figure out to do that would be to add a working flamethrower to my plastic toy tank. That is right, I am now going to make a flamethrower which will shoot fire out of the side of my plastic, the Warhammer's model. Now whilst posting this on social media, I got a lot of questions asking me how to make this thing and in reality it's just a glorified lighter but I still don't want to be giving out instructions on how to do something like this because in my opinion it is simple enough for even small children to be able to do and I don't want anybody doing something that is too stupid with a plastic toy and then blaming ground affected for burning the house down. I hold no responsibility for you copying any things that you see in my videos. If you burn your house, it is not my fault. You probably shouldn't be attaching flamethrowers to your plastic toys. This is the part of the video where I take the dangerous plastic toy that I made to a separate location, secret, undisclosed, and uh, we test it. Uh. 
<laughs> now that I know that the flamethrower works, the tracks work, the doors work, the friggin' guns move, it's time to add lights to this model. I could have added a lot more lighting, and I'm not gonna lie, I really had no idea how to add lighting up until making this video. After this video though, I figured out a lot of things on how to add lighting to these models. And with that, it was time to add colour to my cupcake throwing, flame shooting, space lunchbox boy marine carrying machine. And as this video is already extremely long, I'm not going to bore you with too many details of this. But feel free to enjoy my little video montage. Now on to the real reason that I actually made this tank in the first place. I had seen a video on YouTube with the sax marine, the epic sax marine, riding on top of a land raider, playing a saxophone, and I pretty much realized you can't really get any more iconic than that. And so I decided I wanted to recreate that in real life. And the whole reason for making this tank was to remake that video, but with actual Warhammer models. So the next step, was to build a set for me to actually film this video. And with a couple of last minute adjustments and modifications, this is pretty much where I caught this model done. This video has no sponsor. That means that I paid for everything for this video out of my own pocket. So technically, Ground Affected Studios is the sponsor. If you plan on making this for yourself, I will leave a link for the files in the description below on my website. If you're interested, go and have a look there. Oh, and that's on the condition that I actually am able to upload them and figure that out in time. Also, if you need hobby parts and stuff to make your models, I have them in my store, Ground Effect Studios. Yeah, check it out. And now, let's get back to the video.
And so, once again, we find ourselves at the end of yet another ground affected video. I hope that you found something in this video that inspires you to do something stupid with your own models, even if it does maybe perhaps almost burn your house down. However, obviously I'm not held responsible, uh, terms and conditions apply. I would like to say a massive thank you to my Patreons for their support because without their support, first off, these lights wouldn't blind my eyeballs and secondly, I wouldn't be able to continue making videos like this or any of the ones that I've made in the past. If you like the videos that I make and you want to support the channel, the best way you could really do that is just to continue watching the videos. But if you would like to go a little bit further and support the channel, then Patreon is a place for you. I would like to thank the Patreons that we got recently in the last week, the new ones. And those go as thus. Nick, Andy Roberts and Sean Stradham. Thank you my dudes so much for blinding my eyeballs with the light of the Patreon. This is when I get to say to you, if you didn't like this video or any of the videos I've made in the past, then I don't actually really care. So please can you just, oh. Usually I say words at the end of the video. However, this one is gonna be a teaser, kind of like the Marvel movies. Next, on ground effective. Hover machine tank testing. Test number one. <laughs>